Coming up on UPH, Controller Caboodles. Inappropriate. That's gold, Jerry. Gold. Zen and the art of battling aliens. And more on this episode of Unbelievable Power Hour. Hi, what a cute boy. Interested in my body, aren't you? Not interested. Oh, you're into that. I like girls, but now it's about justice. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of Unbelievable Power Hour, your mind-blowing source for gaming previews, news, and adventure. I'm Dan DeHaan, and with me is... I'm Aaron Wiesinger. Hello, Aaron what Wiesinger. Up? It's episode How's 10. It it's, is this a significant number? I'm not sure. That's double digits, bro. Yeah, we went to Come double on. digits. Yeah. <laughs> well, congrats on episode 10. Yeah, congrats. So, Aaron, how was yeah. this last week of yours, the past? How's, how's your future <laughs> week going to be? My future week is looking pretty bad, but yeah. uh, this past week was great. Well, let's live in the past and hear about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I started working out pretty regularly. Oh, and um, Yeah, it's been a while. So, figured instead of just sitting in front of my computer all the time and not doing anything physical nice it you, would be you've been doing some bench presses <laughs> uh like push-up stuff i can do at my place with uh like weight stuff because yeah, push-up is kind of the bench press without the the bench yeah i'm using my body as the weight yeah yeah cool. that's good i uh i've i've put on a good 10 15 pounds since uh marriage and the pregnancy that's not been good oh, yeah. it's mostly been the pregnancy uh right. so that hasn't been great so i gotta i can't wait for the snow to melt that i can get outside and get more active and shed that weight right right i think uh the thing with me is it's hard if i have a gym membership i won't use it yeah but they're, they're kind if of i dumb. have something <laughs> like once i get home from work it's almost impossible to get me to leave the house again yeah. You know, you're done for the day, you come home. The last thing I want to do is like pack up and go out again. It takes a lot of dedication because you're yeah. exhausted because we use our brains pretty heavily at work. We both have pretty yeah. awesome jobs and uh yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's tough. They're both creative jobs. So, mm -hmm. you for know, sure. uh yeah, it takes uh it takes its mental toll on you. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm home, I'm done. I'm cashed out for the day and I Try to stick around and do what I can to not get too gross. Um, another thing I thought was pretty funny related to my job, actually, is, uh, you know, I work with tiny kids, you know, like third. relatively compared to other kids. They are smaller kids, like maybe with they're disabilities like that. Yeah. You Minuscule. know, they're they're small. That, yeah, that, that was like a thimble size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they are they are regular sized elementary school children. Okay, from uh, about third grade through sixth grade, and um, so had this like you know sweet little fourth grade. I believe it was fourth grade girl come up to me in class the other day, and she's like, "Teacher, do you know like some English swear words?" And I was like, "Well, sh sure, yeah. I I'm not gonna say them, but You're I, like, I know yeah, them." I do. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> and so she like grabs my arm and really seriously looks at me and is like, F you. And but she didn't say F. <laughs> no, she, she said the, the full on F bomb. <laughs> oh, and really? it wasn't just the F bomb. It was F you. So it was particularly <laughs> <laughs> awkward. And I was just like, no. You, you can't ever say that to anybody, okay? <laughs> Did she have I know big you don't know what you're face? saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, she was like totally like no emotion, no expression, <laughs> like just saying things 
It's, it's, oh. it's all about the timing and delivery. So yeah, <laughs> I was like, you'll get it next time. Don't worry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that must've been a little bit of a shock for you. Yeah. That was a little creepy and funny at the same time. Did you just then like whip out a bunch of Korean swear words at her and just like, <laughs> 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 and then she no, it's funny because <laughs> like I, part of the thing with language is uh, one of my friends said it was sort of like magic. Because when the we say things in English, or... yeah, it's like playing the card game, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you or need is to it accumulate like enough. It's a kind of magic. <laughs> no? If you don't have enough mountain cards, you can't play that word. <laughs> um, no, like when you say something in English, it just it feels right. There's no. I don't know how to really describe it, except for like, that's what the word like words have more meaning, I guess. But when you say things in a like a foreign language or language that you're learning, maybe after you've known it for a really long time, it changes. But it's sort of like you're just making sounds that somehow that gets a reaction from somebody. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like so- when you go to a restaurant, it's just like you order something in a foreign language. You're just saying some stuff. I mean, you know what to say, but it has no meaning to you. So you aren't suggesting that English is better than all other languages. What you're saying no. is it's it, you, you know it on in your core, what it means, what you're saying, the impact exactly, of the words. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like what you grow up learning is of course, like what you're going to really feel what words mean. So. Yeah. It's more emotive and you know what they are going to feel when you say it. And so, yeah, <laughs> I completely understand. Yeah. So that's interesting, yeah. but you know yeah. what? We kind of do the same thing. I think like in Spanish class or whatever, we always want to learn the swear words first. Oh yeah. It seems of course. Like. But it's yeah. unfortunate that this little uh, seven year old or whatever <laughs> <laughs> is already at that point. <laughs> Wait till you're a little older. Okay. <laughs> you should have given her a demerit. That's a detention. Put your face against the wall. <laughs> no stickers for you today. Well, you know, speaking of schooling this week, uh, I'm currently taking eight credits and Mm -hmm. uh, it's a busy guy. uh, It's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. And one of those is math. And I hate math a lot. I continuously hate math. And yeah. it is a struggle. Last week after the show, I had to do uh, homework, and it, it ended up being about, it's an online class, the math, and that's yeah. like the dumbest thing to do is take an online <laughs> math class when you're not Why particularly <laughs> good at math. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> <I see. laughs> There's uh, absolutely no like one-on-one tutoring, and yeah. I'm just too cool to go in you know, during office hours and be like, teacher, I need some help. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> Google is my tutor. <laughs> so, yeah, I had tons of homework. It took me like six hours to get that done and then had to study for a math test, which was terrible. But I think I, I, think I did well. Yeah. And by that, I mean like a B. <laughs> I think I pulled a B. That's, yeah. But we, I think in a subject which, which you really struggle in, like getting a B isn't that shameful. Oh, I don't feel like I failed. I would say... <laughs> Uh, even at a, if I got a 70, 75 is my cutoff. If, if yeah. I, you know, with a bad subject, if, if yeah. I don't at least math is really the only bad subject that I have. So yeah. if it's not a 75, I feel like I failed, but yeah, I'm a failure, <laughs> but I, you know, I'm just not wired that way. I'm not wired yeah. to think, you know, mathematically. And even in school, I had so much trouble with it. And just like yeah. understanding what is going on, why am I doing that? And I really am someone that probably needed one-on-one tutorship. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> you know the whole time, but yeah, yeah, it's just like. But I think for some people, they don't realize that that you. Mm-hmm. Some people just aren't wired to think the same way. You know, yeah, it, we come at it through a different perspective, and so mm-hmm. I think very visually, and uh, yeah. so it's it's a lot different. Yeah, same here. I mean, I I, uh, I agree. Like, math is the one subject. I feel like there's something wrong with the way math specifically is taught. Yes. Because, like, there are so many people like us that just don't get it. Like, I don't feel like I'm incapable of getting it. I just feel like 
somehow it's not presented to me in the right I way. I think that that's it. It's it's the way it's delivered to me because at some point it clicks for me. Now it's still right. even if I can uh, recognize the formula that I'm supposed to use or something like that. It's still yeah. a struggle for me to go step by step, and I have to you know organize my notes and everything the right way. Uh, sure, but it is even still a struggle to commit to the the formula and all that garbage. <laughs> Basically, yeah. it's all teacher's fault. It's it's <laughs> most of the teachers. Exactly. <laughs> Agreed. <Man. laughs> I think they should get paid less. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on our scores. Just math teachers, though. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones are fine. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> that was boring. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's time for the weekly playlist. I loved that song. I could have let that song go all that day. That was pretty jamming. It's, uh, it's I got to say one more thing. Like, I noticed you doing it earlier as well. What? When you take a drink of something like this and you raise your eyes, you raise your eyebrows when you take a drink. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> hilarious, though. <laughs> I don't you need wanna, to see I don't want to get my eyebrows wet, brah. <laughs> Keep those bad boys out of the way. <laughs> I think I know what it is. Uh, it's a big cup, and uh-huh. it does... The the rim of the cup hits right here, so I <laughs> raise <up> that. <laughs> <laughs> hits my brow, so I got to raise okay. my brow. I think that's why. I've never thought of it, though, but... Try to rationalize that. So, <laughs> great observation, <Anyway>. though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if, you, if anyone would like to see me do that, make sure to check out our YouTube <laughs> channel where you can watch us talk to each other. You can other. watch us both. Here, I'll do it. Hey. <laughs> oh, wow. That was great. He just took a sip, <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was exciting. That was good, yeah. All right, so it's time for the weekly playlist uh, where we talk about the games we played. And uh, we both played, you know, for the busy weeks we had, we played some games. Yeah, got it in there. The first game that I played this week, um, I actually owned it on the PS3. And it Mm -hmm. just recently came out on the PS4, a part of the PS Plus program, Dead Nation. Mm. Have you heard of this? I have. It's a good this game. Is, uh, yeah. Now, do you avoid all zombie games for the most part? Mm, I'm very leery of them. Have you become a zombieist? Yes. I, w- I would say that's fair to say. I am mm. sort of zombieist. Wow. Kind of burned out. Huh. Burned out that's on zombies. So, Dead Nation is a top down shooter, isometric, and it is the zombie apocalypse. It's mm-hmm. a game that's created by. Um, House Marquee. Have you heard of them? They've no. made some other good games. Super Stardust HD. They did that for the PS3. And then oh, really? most recently, they made Resogun for the PS4. And that's a really good nice. game. Mm-hmm. So I really, uh, I'm digging Dead Nation. It's kind of like twin stick shootery. Uh, okay. So you're just like hordes of zombies are coming at you, different types of zombies. And you use the right analog stick to, uh, aim Mm -hmm. and the other one to walk and then you actually Mm -hmm. pull the trigger i think technically in a twin stick you walk with the left and aim and shoot with the right i'm not sure right it usually does both yeah yeah so um i like it though it's it's kind of it's dark a little dreary Mm -hmm. uh and i think it's got a good variety of i like the levels and you get a bunch of uh you can find like cash and kind of some power-ups and stuff upgrades i think there's like uh armor upgrades throughout the maps okay and Mm -hmm. uh it's it's a great co-op game particularly you can Mm -hmm. play with a friend and uh just shred some zombies with your weapons so you can upgrade weapons it's got a pretty deep upgrade system Mm -hmm. uh and you can buy new weapons stuff like that and i really like it i think it's fun um nice i don't have any friends though (laughs) So I can't play with what, anyone. Wait, what am I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Sorry. I do have my uh, Aaron mannequin that sits next to me while I play, <laughs> though. <laughs> it's a little weird. We need to, like, rig up some sort of robotic hands <laughs> that I can play with via the internet. Yeah. Uh, they'd probably go haywire and do something I don't want them to do, though. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What are you doing, Aaron know. hands? <laughs> So, uh, there's also another game called Zombie Apocalypse that came out for the 360, and it's very similar. It's that same isometric top-down view. And right. that one is more that there is a single, like, just map that you don't, like, travel through the same. It's just, like, trying yeah. to survive that section, and it's like a horde mode or something like that where just tons of zombies keep coming at you, and you and a friend, you know, try to survive. And so while yeah. I'm playing it, I'm kind of comparing it to that, but they're very different. And so mm-hmm. I kind of stopped comparing them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's pretty like action, fast paced kind of game. Uh, I would say action. It's not, it's not that fast. Like you're just kind of walking through all the levels kind of thing. Okay. But, uh, you know, you can, if, if you hold um, the, the trigger, you can power yeah. power shot or okay, sure. you can tap it a bunch if you have a rifle or hold it down if you have an SMG. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, the graphics are really nice. It's really pretty game too. Yeah. A ton of detail. And I love when an isometric game has just amazing detail yeah. in the graphics. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm hoping though, I, I think what would be really cool is if Left 4 Dead if that series sometime came out with a top down Mm -hmm. shooter, because that game is, I love left for dead. Yeah. Did I, I go, I kind of go back and forth with it. Like, uh, it is one of the games. I feel like you need to have a friend to play with in order for it to be fun. I agree. Like just playing it by yourself is, it's, it's a shooting game, but I like the, yeah, I mean, there's not a, but I think, uh, it does a great job with the atmosphere. Yeah, uh, yeah, that feeling of isolation. I think the levels are really good, and I like mm-hmm. holding down the fort at some point. You know that there's going to be a wave coming, and you're right. working together. And I, I th- it's a yeah. great co-op experience. Yeah, and you the set voice up the acting. car alarm. You got to be like, yeah. oh no, yeah. The voice acting is really good. Like I love hearing reloading Molotov <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to ask. I know you play a lot of. Z- uh, not zombies, but games that include zombies in them and watch television that includes zombies. Do you feel like not at all burned out by the whole zombie everything? Or um, not? Just, it doesn't I would say you? for me, it's just like any other genre at this point. Like, I don't mm-hmm. think it's like, I mean, in the beginning, it was like we didn't get a lot of zombie stuff. So it was like, oh, right. man, all this stuff started coming in and it was great. And then it became, you know, oversaturated with a ton of zombie yeah. stuff. And then it just became a, hey, there's going to be some good zombie stuff and some bad zombie stuff. So I don't think I approach it um, any different than, say, I do fantasy, you know, like uh, elves and, you know, wizards right. and stuff like that. It's just like another right. genre. Um, I, I'd say for the most part, I, I think, you know, probably 80 to 90 percent of zombie stuff is garbage. And there's a, there's like, there's a particular zombie thing. I I don't like, um, I like the traditional slow moving, you know, lumbering zombie. Right. And not the 28 days later, like screaming. uh, Well, I liked that in the context of 28 days later, I thought that was really good. I think though, when now they're like, now most of them, it's like, we can't make a zombie movie scary unless they're thrashing and screaming and tortured souls, you know, yeah. running at us. And I think that's just kind of dumb because I think it's kind of creepier when there's that slow or, you know, you think you can get it under control, but, um, right. but then all of a sudden there's more around you than you expected and that kind of thing. Right. You right. know, I, Oh, we could talk about walking dead some more. Cause it just that show pisses me off <laughs> the the zombie logic and stuff in that show is just terrible it's always like there's always one cr- hanger on the corner waiting for you oh right. you know or in plain sight that you just didn't notice and i yeah. just don't think 
they have to, there's, they don't have to use jump scares in that show. Right. You know, there are other ways to frighten people, you know, mm-hmm. and, and make them feel uneasy. Ugh. But that's their like preferred method of. Yeah. It's like jump scares, jump scares. No, no. How about <laughs> some suspense? You know, right. Uh, right. it's just like get creative, but I think they churn those out so quick. It's probably the issue. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're doing more and more episodes and it's just like do six episodes a season. I was fine with that. Make six yeah. quality episodes and, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know, on. one one thing oh. I wanted to say real quick, like I I'm sort of sick of zombies, but in the same way, like don't think that I'm just picking on zombies because you mentioned like high fantasy, like with elves and dwarves and stuff like I get real tired of that. too. Yeah. Like if I play like. I love RPGs, but I like the RPG genre. Like, I don't like to play as an elf every single game. Yeah. Like, it gets old. Yeah, so. I agree. And I, I, I think it's kind of that same stuff. Like, you know, vampires went through yeah. it, too. And, you know, yeah. there's still some vampire stuff that comes out. And some, mm-hmm. it, barely any of it's good because I think vampires are <laughs> stupid for the most part. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they are. They're so dumb. <laughs> I hate Except sexy, for Soul Reaver. <laughs> I hate sexy vampires. That's what I hate. Where it's like, yeah. oh, your blood tastes so good. Oh, right. We're making love <laughs> while we're drinking blood. Whatever. <laughs> I played uh, a little more Tomb Raider this week, and uh-huh. I, I'm still really enjoying that. Uh, the, nice. the death scenes in that, the cut yeah. scenes for when you die, they're pretty gruesome. Yeah. Like yeah. I've heard Like that Mortal the, Kombat? No, you know, Mortal Kombat was kind of cartoony, gruesome. Right. I mean, it was right. just like, all right, this is outrageous, you know? Right. Where these kind of feel more like you're watching a snuff film. <laughs> God. <laughs> they just feel uncomfortable yeah, watching it. Yeah, there was one that just made me uncomfortable where, um, like, Lara, Lara, Laura was mm-hmm. being um, choked Ms. Croft. to death. And it made me like, oh, yeah. I hope, oh, great. I died again. <laughs> and then it happened again. I had to watch it like three yeah. times because I was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a quick time animation thing that I had to get through. And it was just like, oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it doesn't cut to like full motion video of like, because the old games of yore would uh, would snap to like, FMV crappily compressed video of like <laughs> stuff happening yeah. like that. <laughs> I mean, they're they're well crafted, but they are just a little like they're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the other, the only other thing I wanted to say about Tomb Raider is that Lara Lara Laura mm-hmm. is distractingly attractive. <laughs> you're you're having a hard time getting through the game because you're like man she i can't stop just watching her looks really good <laughs> 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 no it's just it's uh <laughs> when it, your wife plays or when you play and your wife is in the same room is she like hey dan Dan, snap out of it. (laughs) Lara, Laura, Lara's eyes are up here, Dan. (laughs) Uh, No, it's just like, uh, they made her very attractive. And I'm not, I'm I'm not uh, some gross person that's like, you know, watches uh, manga porn or anything. (laughs) But not that we're saying anything's wrong with that. (laughs) Yes, we are. (laughs) Let's, let's just say it. We are. (laughs) Oh my gosh. No, but they, you know, it's just like, it's, it's weird how attractive they made this CGI character. Right. So did they base her on somebody specifically? My wife. Do you know? (laughs) Oh, (laughs) good save. (laughs) Thanks. Uh, I don't know. I didn't like get creepy and start looking it up. Like I got to find out who this person is because she's, (laughs) she's beautiful. (laughs) No, but it's just, it it is like, uh, imagine how real it's going to get eventually, you know? Right. right. Wow. So man, everybody got to 
nice glimpse into my soul right now. Yeah. Pick this game up then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also played The Walking Dead this week. Uh-huh. Did uh, yeah. some, a couple of Let's Play videos for that. I'm yeah. playing it on the computer, so I have to catch up through uh, episode one so I can get on to episode two. I have not played okay. that yet, but uh, mm-hmm. I really like it. It's different, though, as far as the controls between the iPad and going to the PC. It is a right. much different experience because you kind of using the controller. Or? Uh, I'm using the keyboard and mouse. Okay. And uh, it's with the iPad, you know, you do kind of all the same stuff. You either you use your finger to tap the screen, to swipe on the screen, to select and all that stuff. It's very intuitive. Right. And you're kind of it's mixing up a bit more with between the keyboard and mouse. Yeah. So when it was showing right on the the screen or left, you know, in the quick time events, mm-hmm. I was just naturally swiping my mouse right and left. Uh, right. You know, and it was just and then I was dying and I finally realized, oh, I got to hit D or whatever on the keyboard. You know, okay. it's different. So that was a little something to get used to. Or then suddenly it would just say Q on the screen. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but overall, I'd say, you know, that was an adjustment, and mm-hmm. but I like it better. Uh-huh. I like playing like on the computer the, better than the iPad. Right. The overall experience. Yeah. And like, you're not having the hardware difficulties. I think it, make, it makes it feel more like one of the classic adventure games playing it on the PC, which isn't something I expected to feel when I started playing okay. it. You know, yeah. it, it, it just kind of took me back to that nostalgia. Yeah. So no, that's that's sort of what I felt when I was playing uh, the Wolf Among Us. Was like, man, this this feels pretty right on. Yeah, like it, it felt good playing it again. I I think you should play The Walking Dead. I think you'll uh, you'll like it. It's it's just a good game. It's a good story. You know, yeah. regardless of um, you know the the backdrop of being the zombie apocalypse. I yeah. think the characters are a lot better. The things that they go through are so much better. It it feels more original. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's something that you'll be like, that was good. That was fun. Yeah. And, and it had zombies, you know? So cool. Yeah. Uh, last game then I played, uh, is Raymond legends on my Vita. Mm -hmm. So did a little portable stuff, um, Mm -hmm. because I, I was busier this week. So I love the Raymond games and, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, slowly get through this one. I just think they're the, the quality is great. The animation is stunning, and it's really nice mobile experience too. I really uh-huh. like it on the mobile platform on the Vita. It looks gorgeous. Now I thought that you had finished Legends, or was that just Origins? I'm almost done with Origins. I thought I was okay. done, and there are just a ton of levels in that one. I, okay. I mean, there are a ton of levels in Origins, but uh, I believe that all the levels from Origins are in Legends. Also, when you buy Legends, you also get origin levels like in addition to the levels yes. in legends yeah so it's huge it's a huge <laughs> game yes okay so Very i cool. didn't get a chance to play assassin's creed this week i wish i did oh. but I, i'm gonna try and get back on that this this week so yeah, i want to um, hear about your uh your pirate ship adventures yeah and you know one thing i was thinking about One thing we take for granted when we play Assassin's Creed is jumping into giant piles of hay. (laughs) Have you ever bailed hay, Aaron? Uh, I have. It hurts. When I was younger. Yeah. Like your arms. It's not a soft material. No. You have to wear (laughs) long sleeves. You got to wear gloves because it will scratch the crap out of your arms. I, in no shape or form, want to jump into a giant pile of hay. No, you're going to get cut and poked. <laughs> yeah, something is going to go somewhere that you don't want it to. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, when you see all these like fantasy movies or TV shows or whatever, and they show people like sleeping in barns and hay and just like <laughs> that is uncomfortable. Or uh, a roll in the hay, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Laura, yeah. Laura, no, thanks. Laura. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <laughs> so what have you been playing uh i played some more hearthstone um but i'm gonna be honest like i still like hearthstone a lot 
but it's kind of like gone down to you know a couple times a week i'll play some games why is that not much time actually um i think before when i wasn't like really having the active teaching schedule that i have now um i had a lot more free time and and i wasn't as mentally taxed at the end of the day so now you know i come home sometimes i don't want to play games i don't want to watch the tv like i don't want to do anything yeah like i just want to veg for a little bit um so but yeah anyway like my my hearthstone's gone down a bit but as you know i've been playing a lot more wow and um can I say something? Some... Can I say something about Hearthstone before, like, to add to what you were saying? Um, you may. Thank you. <laughs> I think what we tend to lose, though, is the the experience of playing with friends. Yes, I think we might play a bit more if we played with friends. You know, because it's that yeah. excitement that you can talk about. Oh man, we had a good game. And yeah. you know, trying to talk to someone about having a good game with a complete stranger is like. Oh man, I played this guy on the internet, and um, <laughs> and he said, "Well played." Yeah. Oh, <laughs> remember when this happened with this card, and I got you down to two points, and you still can't. Oh wait, I don't know you. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's all I was thinking. No, I I totally agree, and I think I don't know why we. I need to add you. I just keep not doing it. Yeah. I need to add. I've tried adding you a couple times, but it hasn't worked. Okay. So. Yeah, you need to do I've that. Just, I've just ignored it when I saw your... Oh. Ass! So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one thing that when you open up Battle.net to play any of the Blizzard games, like Diablo 3, Hearthstone, uh, World of Warcraft, they're all through the Battle.net launcher. Mm-hmm. And they have like a little news feed and it says, hey, if you... Uh, oh, because Hearthstone, we should say, is no longer in beta. Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's it's exactly the same as it was. Yeah, before because it was <laughs> it was done before it was it was done. Yeah, I I can't um, wait for the iPad though. <laughs> that, I'm kind of holding off from really playing it until it comes uh-huh. to the iPad because yeah. then I'll play it. Uh, you know, Brittany will be on her iPad and we'll play that a lot. We'll go get some coffee yeah. and we'll play games while we drink our coffee. It, yeah. It's a no, great super cool game for the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Uh, I just wish I had one that could actually play, play that game. <laughs> but someday. Someday. Um, so in the, in the Battle.net news feed, it said, hey, go in Hearthstone and play and win either three regular played matches against a human or three arena matches. All right. And if you win three of those, you get a Hearth Steed in World of Warcraft. Is it really so called that, the Hearth uh, Steed? It is called the Hearthsteed. Oh wow. Yeah. And it's like a sort of Pegasus looking horse, like made of stone, but sort of broken up in parts with cool glowing bits coming through. I saw it in your video <laughs> that you posted, and it does look really cool. Yeah. It's not like this stupid looking at ah, it's take it, whatever. I, I mean, like dumb. they they put a lot of work into these like additional things that they give you. Um, so I just thought that was a really cool that like is. cross gaming thing that they're doing there. That's a cool cross breed or yeah. <laughs> something. Is that what? It is? <laughs> yeah, I think like with them making, I mean, like there was a big uproar when Diablo three came out, how it was like you had to sign in and you had to be online to play, even though it is wholly a, oh, not wholly, but like most of the time people were playing in um, like single player environments yeah and so i was like well why the hell do i have to be online to play that um and like i was sort of upset about it at first i don't really care so much anymore because i usually have access to internet now Um, let's hear what (laughs) what level of being upset were you were you flipping tables over and (laughs) no kicking your feet (laughs) I won. <laughs> just whining a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why they have to do it that way? I've I've actually been watching a lot of Bob's Burgers. Yeah, you know that yep. cartoon. That's a good show. I think of Tina, the girl, always going oh <laughs> <laughs> Whenever she gets upset. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so kind of like that. All right. 
Um, but anyway, so Blizzard has done, I think, oh, because Diablo 3 is online, like they now have that ability to like track and use everything between the games. Um, so if they want to have, like, you do something cool in Hearthstone and maybe you get something in Diablo or you do something in WoW and you get something in Hearthstone, like, who knows? Like, they could do sort of cross-gaming cool stuff like that. The possibilities are endless! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet, so, though. That yeah. is really cool. Yeah, yeah that was cool. I, I recorded a, a Let's Play vid this week of me just going through a dungeon in WoW and, or part of a dungeon, and then a couple minutes when I opened up the uh, delivery of the Hearth Steed from Hearthstone. Check it out on our YouTube uh, channel. There's tons of goodies yeah. out there. Like our videos. Yeah. yeah. We got a bunch of stuff up there. Um, also, I took a step back and got back into Rogue Legacy. You need to do some Let's Plays of Rogue Legacy. Yeah, I think so. Although I think I'm going to be embarrassed because I'm not saying I'm good. I just I like the game and yeah. I played it a lot. And I am level 155, 56. And I still have only beaten the two bosses. Ugh. So <laughs> both. But I uh, I think that they made a couple updates to it where, you know, like if you beat a boss before, then the door like the boss door is closed mm -hmm. you can't do anything with it but yeah. now like i went back there and suddenly it's like this shimmering open looking ghost door oh. and you can play it again and you you transport into this separate level not as the character you've been playing but somebody completely new like another and universe yeah Interesting. Alternate universe rogue legacy. And it's like a beefed up version of the boss that you fought originally. Hmm. So I thought it was kind of cool, but like, I don't think I will ever have the patience to do it because it was really hard. Like, I don't know how you could time and, and like maintain the will to actually do that. Yeah. That game does require some patience at times um, yeah. because it, it can be frustrating um you know you're you're looking for patterns and openings where you can attack and that can be frustrating if it doesn't uh if you screw up somehow or then have to go right. through the whole level again <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think like if it because it sort of reminds me of mega man a lot where like if you memorize the patterns of the boss battles and if you memorize which bosses you have to beat in order to get the right power to beat the next boss then like it's it's doable it's still hard but it doesn't inspire the same rage yeah that i get a lot of the time in road <laughs> legacy because the patterns aren't as clear um anyway i uh, played a little bit of that so i noticed that was different um one thing that i saw <clears throat> excuse me i tried to get strider today and play that tried to get strider it sounds like it'd Actually, be easy to get strider sorry i i did get strider and it was super easy to pay steam <laughs> and have them be like you know what here you take this game that you just bought and i said thanks steam i'll uh i'll go ahead and install that and play it so, this sounds just like simple aaron i don't understand what's the problem yeah i mean it's i do it all the time but this time i was not able to play at all what? Because I got a unable to create a direct three D blah 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 DirectX eleven error code. And the problem is not that I don't have DirectX eleven, which I do, in its software form. You have to have a specific DirectX eleven manufactured video card to play this game. Now was there any buyer beware? label on the no and that's what i was sort of a lot enraged by because before i played and bought games i think the witcher 2 mentions specifically like you have to have a file system that is not fat 32 like it has to be able to support large enough file sizes and it's very clear this big orange box that says like do not get this game if don't you do buy not this game 
It just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what it should have said. <laughs> yeah. They listened to my review and they said, you know what? Aaron doesn't care for it. So. Blam. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that they do in those cases, like it's really cool that they say like, look, this isn't going to work. We know what your system is and it's not, not happening. Or at least watch out for this. But no red flags came up. So I bought the game. Uh, it looked like according to the system requirements, it would be fine tried to play it couldn't do it looked it up on forums is like oh sorry that's just the way it is and so far it looks like their stance is too bad like we'd want it to run on a direct x11 card and the problem is i thought that if there was an issue with the game you could jump on over to the steam help area and be like bleep 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 return game like i want a refund this game doesn't work with my system yeah, I mean, it seems like because there's so many configurations of PCs, like that would be sort of a commonplace thing. Yeah, where somebody gets a game, oh man, it doesn't work at all. So, um, but anyway, like according to their official like end user license agreement, they do not do any sort of returns. So I spent fifteen bucks. Granted, it could have been like sixty bucks on like a full retail game. Um. And I can't play it at all. Yeah. And the only option you might have is trading the game at this point. You might be able to trade it with someone, right? Because I believe they have a trade program with people. Can you? Okay. I think okay. you can offer a trade to someone and include a game. I think. If I'm wrong. Even if somebody let me know, but I thought you could. Okay. okay. I, I can understand to some degree. They don't want people just buying games to demo them and, you know, so that you're giving someone money and then pulling it out of their pocket. Sure. But in that instance, it's like it should have been clearly labeled, hey, you're you're not going to be able to play this game, dude. Right. So and especially since right. they have access to your your system specs. Yeah. I mean, very so, much so they know what you're using to play these games. Yeah. Big brother's watching. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like. I mean, you can see how long people have put into games as well. So they can see like, oh, you put zero time into this. So Mm -hmm. like, yeah, we can tell it's not like you're just playing it and want to get the money back. It's it doesn't work. I think digital returns are eventually going to um, come about. I mean, they're they're going to happen at some point. I think, you know, they already exist in some some uh, online store you know, environments. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I see you also was... played saints row four. What? Yeah. I played saints row three. I love saints row three actually. Yeah. Um, I got kind of tired of the grand theft auto series yeah. and I played, I think saints row maybe one and two. I, I know I played those a little bit like a long time ago and I didn't really like it that much. That was just kind of stupid. Um, but with Saints Row 3, they really upped the production quality. It doesn't take itself that seriously. Like, it's it's stupid, but it, it is funny because it is, like, so stupid yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it is. It's very stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just um, kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it's very uh, tongue-in-cheek, uh, satire. Um, right. You know, it is it is funny. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to be, like, a really serious... Drum, dramatic, dramatic story. Dramatic is how I say. <laughs> you say drama, I say drama. Drama. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it's. I mean, you you play as the president of the United States, and there's an alien invasion, and you're also the leader of a gang. So it's like it's it really doesn't follow the serious track. It's it's pretty corny. Are you, are yeah. you liking Saints Row Four though? I am so far. Um, I ha- I've got maybe an hour and a half into it so far, but um, it's cool. It it picks up pretty much where the third one left off, and I played that I think last summer, Saints Row Three. But uh, but yeah, if you want a cool like sandbox crazy game, and this one I really wanted to try because it looks more like Crackdown. Yeah, which was freaking sweet. Yeah, you uh, you liked that game. A lot of people like that. They hold that yeah. in high regard. Yeah, Crackdown is all. And they do a lot of like superpower stuff in Saints Row 4 that looks very similar. We'll see. (laughs) 
All right, everybody, it is time for news. We're going to go through some of the big highlights of news stories this week. And we've got a lot of controller stories. There is a lot (laughs) happening in the business of controllers. Yeah. Uh, The first story that we want to look at, the first controller we want to look at is uh, Valve released new mock-up images of their their update to the Steam Mm -hmm. controller. And yeah. uh, the controller now features the more traditional directional pad button layout, and they yeah. also removed the touch screen that was on it. Mm-hmm. I I I'm glad they got rid of the touch screen. Um, I'm not big on the PS4's touch screen, and so okay. I mean I know that it could be better, maybe an improvement over it. I mm-hmm. think it's just. It it's not as responsive. Like I think it's a cool concept because I like the whole pinch and pinch thing to zoom and stuff to zoom in. Right, right. But like playing Assassin's Creed Four, it's like it doesn't feel like you have control. It's like when it just shoots in quickly or shoots back <laughs> out, and yeah. so it's just not as responsive as I, I would like it to be. Uh, yeah, so. and one of the things. Sorry, go ahead. No, so, yeah, so I'm just not big on it right now. Okay. Um, Like, we talked about before, one of the, or I think it's the biggest expense for the Wii U is that big, fancy, nice controller with the the screen in the middle of it. Yeah, the gamepad. And it seems like, yeah, like, this is just something that's going to add to the cost of the controller that's not really that necessary. And so I'm, I'm sort of relieved to see that they, not because I... I think they went the cheap route. I just think it's a smarter move. Yeah, I almost wish Nintendo just would have included a, a small display. You know, like yeah. the gamepad would just be not an actual controller that it's tied to a controller, but it was just, right. hey, the Wii U also comes with this little second screen that you can set aside that is a right, little right. tablet, you know. Sure. Uh, I I do appreciate touchscreen technology. I think mm-hmm. it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But I think it's another one of those things like the move technology, you know, motion controls. Yeah. It's like yeah. it has its applications. And when you try and squirt it into everything, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. a little, you know, overdone then. Yeah. You don't want to have to do it all the time. And and I guess, you know, I think the the as far as the PS4 controller, I like the concept I just, mm-hmm. I'm not sure about the execution. I haven't seen an instance where I like it. It's used more as a giant button than anything else. <laughs> yeah. Because you can depress it. So, right. you know, it's just like, it, it, it isn't, I don't know if the word is like tactile, uh, you know, with mm-hmm. the, the feeling of it and stuff. It just doesn't feel, it's like you just slide across it. And, you know, right. at least with glass. You have that, you feel your finger drag and you get all the grease yeah. on the screen and all those yeah, oils. All that thumb and, juice. And this just feels, <laughs> this <laughs> just doesn't have that, that sensation. Yeah. And they, they still, they got rid of, well, they never had in the first place the analog sticks. So that's still absent. Yeah. And I feel like the left, like, I'm fine if they want to keep the touchpad on the right side, that touch mm-hmm. thing, but put an analog yeah. on the left. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think that there you got it right there. Mm-hmm. So you have both e- capabilities and I, I don't know that we're even, they might be getting closer to a final design, but mm-hmm. I have a feeling like from that first mock-up that they showed us to what we're actually going to get is going to be diff- very different. Yeah. Remember the PS3, uh, the boomerang controller mock-up? When the no. P- yeah, when the PS, I didn't mean. Do you remember the PS3? Like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> question mark. <laughs> when the PS3, when just before it was, I think officially announced at E3. Yeah, they showed uh the controller, and it was like a boomerang shape, mm-hmm. very different than what ended up coming out. They showed this boomerang, right. and they're like, ah, oh, we're just gonna go back to the six axis <laughs> never <look>. mind <laughs> <laughs> so and i wonder if we're getting a little bit into that territory with the steam controller where it's like right it's just gonna be completely different when it finally yeah. comes out 
which I think would be hilarious <laughs> if they did that. <laughs> hey, remember we were showing you this stuff? <laughs> and they pushed it so hard. Too. We had you <laughs> test this controller and everything. Well, that's, that's it's just a 360 no. controller that we're going to now. Make. <laughs> it just looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the 360 controller. Yeah. Uh, and then I, 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 in other controller news. Yeah. Uh, images of a Bluetooth Amazon branded game controller were leaked mm-hmm. this week. Yeah. And it features, you know, kind of the traditional layout of a controller. It's mm-hmm. a little, it's not very shapely though. It's kind it of like a little wonky. It looks like it's, it's an overweight controller and it's kind of lost <laughs> its shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like, it looks very much like a prototype to me. Yeah. It's like we're not going to put much into the the design yet as far as the way this puppy's going to look. We're we're going for function right now. Yeah. And it's not like rounded. It's very everything is flattened off. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not very smushed. contoured. <clears throat> yes. But uh it it's raising rumors that Amazon is going to enter into the console race. Mhm. So What do you think about that? I think, I think we're going to have a rash of this stuff. I think, uh, I think it all started with the Wii. Yeah. I think the Wii showed that, holy cow, there was a huge, the Wii and mobile gaming showed Mm -hmm. that there's this huge market for casual gamers that we can get. I have a feeling that there will probably be some set top box that is much like an Apple TV or yeah. a Roku player yeah. and it will have games. Right. It will be basically uh sort of like an Ouya but done well. <laughs> so that's that's kind of, that's where I think they're going. You don't think they would try and like go up against Sony or Microsoft and make like a full on I won't, system. I won't rule that, that out. <clears throat> um but I, I don't think so. I think it will be a smaller, more uh, compact system that, yeah. that plays a lot more like, uh, you know, maybe closer to a steam, uh, a, a cheaper steam machine, something like that. Right. Right. Uh, that's just my gut feeling. Yeah. I, and I also wouldn't be surprised if the next, you know, Apple TV comes with a controller mm-hmm. or controller support because yeah, it's games are a billions and billions of dollar industry and mm-hmm. i think people are starting to respect that yeah and hey, you know they i didn't put this on the, the news money. but did you <laughs> see like all the legislation that they're trying to uh tax violent games like the violent game tax yeah <laughs> <laughs> no. isn't that dumb that is really i dumb. hate that like suddenly i mean at what point do you declare a game violent if there's car- too much cartoon violence they're gonna be like whoa and the other thing is it. it's ignorant because there's al- already been enough study and proof from other countries that uh vi- you know video game violence isn't what is causing violence right it is not it is an outlet if anything that you know people can let off some steam a little right Mm-hmm. and and so literally you, yeah <laughs> and your steam machine <laughs> so i just yeah that that's ridiculous but anyways yeah that is dumb and then uh come we also heard that warner brothers has invested 18 million dollars into machinima is it machinima or machinima i think it's machinima machinima like uh, machine and then emma emma I think it's machinima. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Warner Brothers stated that they are <clears throat> impressed with uh, machinima as a distribution partner. <laughs> uh. <laughs> machinima is also, they've already received like 35 million from Google. Yeah. And there's more cash. Uh, basically, aren't they just like an internet version of G4? It looks like it. I mean, we were looking at their stuff earlier, and it's a very broad selection of videos that you can watch through their, I don't know what you, I guess they just distribute. A a lot of esports and stuff like that. Yeah. 
I, I think uh, G4 drop, dropped the ball, really, in that aspect. Yeah. I mean, they should have saw well, the writing on the wall as far as cable TV and video games and, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, one thing that, unfortunately, like G4, they don't appear to be doing that well right now. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, they're doing well enough, though, that Warner Brothers gave them $18 million. I think yeah, there's but potential. There's, sure. Sure. I mean, there's been a couple news stories, though, like within the past couple of years, they've had subsequent like layoffs. Yeah. Like uh, they had like 20 to 25 people being let go. And then the following year, they had another chunk of people let go. Um, so I, I don't know if maybe they just overexpanded and then now they're realizing. I think that's probably I think it's probably that we're they're they're trying to figure out how to operate more lean and yeah do it the right way they still think the concept and everything is good but it's just like right. doing it in a way that they can actually make money <laughs> right they know they the market's need... <laughs> there they know there's a way yeah. to make money but having yeah. a ton of a huge workforce is probably not the way yeah exactly so then our our last story is uh is about games with gold Do you know what this is mm-hmm. i do this is uh microsoft's well they they don't really like the comparison, but Microsoft's version of <laughs> PS Plus. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and uh, so they're they're addressing you know feedback that games with gold only offer old games. Right. So it should more be, like games with old. Hey, you beat me to it, you <laughs> jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the difference is though they're saying, hey. You know, we're different than PS Plus because you get to keep the game. Well, yeah. if you're giving us crappy old games, who cares? <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you're and also there's you're inviting us to quit, you know, our gold account yeah. too. Yeah. PS Plus is like, hey, we're gonna give you awesome games and you're going to stay a member. If you stop being right. a member, you don't get to play them, but we're gonna keep giving you awesome games because we yeah. want you to keep being a member. Right. And very new games as well. Uh, Phil Spencer from Microsoft, he was quoted as saying, one of our issues with games with gold, not issues, but differences between other (laughs) systems we get compared to, (laughs) is the fact that with games with gold, you get to keep the game regardless of whether you continue to subscribe. And the business around games with gold for us is just fundamentally different from some of the other programs that are out there. (laughs) <laughs> really <laughs> i don't think so it doesn't sound that different they just don't have as quality uh that quality of a library to choose from it at least at this point i, I think they can't believe that uh sony is doing it they're like what are they doing those jerks yeah <laughs> how do we get in on that <laughs> let's give away old games <laughs> here have perfect dark Zero. Everybody. I mean, does it cost less? Uh, yeah, no, probably. they're about the same price. Yeah. Uh, you can get Xbox Live, I think, on sale more frequently than PS Plus, but still. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, that's just dumb. We, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that, Aaron. I didn't mean to cut you off with the music cue. <laughs> okay. It was bound to happen, though. <laughs> I just wanted to say how stupid the name was. Games with oh, gold. Yeah, you're mean, right. It is really. They stupid. couldn't have come up with a worse name. Games with gold. <laughs> it's so. I mean, I get the gold membership and everything. It just sounds boring. It was like and a bunch of people weird. got in a room uh, and they were like, hey, what, what should we call this? <laughs> Games of gold. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. Break. <laughs> <laughs> and let's try this again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, that's a good song. All too. right, everybody. It's time for the retro game of the week. And this week's retro game is Blast Corpse. Mm-hmm. No. Corpse. <laughs> Blast core. 
Yeah. For the uh, Nintendo 64. It was developed by Rare and published by Nintendo. It had their seal of quality. And uh, it was released in 1997. I loved this game. Did you ever play yeah. it? No. You, did you have a Nintendo no, 64? I did not. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> did you do anything fun as a kid? <laughs> I had the Nintendo and I had the Genesis. You know, we, I told I was I was the PC kid. I told you. The PC kid. You remember. Yeah. You remember. So what this game is about is there's a runaway truck that is filled with nuclear nu- nuclear missiles. I, uh, I think it's nuclear. <laughs> nuclear <laughs> missiles. <laughs> and uh, basically you have all of these vehicles, these demolition vehicles at your disposal, including yeah. robots. Nice. And you have to destroy everything that's in its path. So mm-hmm. there's like these unique little ways that you have to destroy stuff. Uh you know, you can find clever kind of puzzles, little puzzles. You mm-hmm. know, you might have to use a crane or something and move boxes over and destroy stuff with that. You can actually yeah. get out of the vehicles and interact a little bit with the level. Right. And it was a really suspenseful game. I I enjoyed it. It was just like, ah, <laughs> you saw that truck coming. <laughs> it's going to blow everything up. <laughs> yeah. Was this something that you owned or was it like a frequently rented game? I owned it because I uh, had, as I do today, a ton of games. My library was huge. My Nintendo 64 was like the first of my gigantic libraries. I got every game (laughs) I wanted in the world. And that's when kind of when I started working, you know, like bagging groceries and stuff. So sure. Yeah, this was a fave. I ended up. I think it would be cool if you went through and did a video of your library. Um, it's just not as impressive now because I traded so much or sold it. I mean, I still have a Nintendo sixty four, mm-hmm. but I do have a decent library for this generation and stuff. But yeah, my retro yeah. library is kind of. I um, it makes me sad. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guess what, guys? It's time for the giveaway, and uh, it's yeah. the weekly giveaway. We do it weekly, yeah. and uh, you know what? We gave away, um, we gave away wa- the, Walking the Walking Dead season Dead. two last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we announced the winner, and we haven't heard anything back from the winner yet. <laughs> Maybe you give it another couple days. Oh, uh, I was thinking we'll we'll give it at least a. You know, week, week and a half, and then if we right. have, we'll we'll send another message, and we'll send a PM, and then you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you want to win, <laughs> hey, guess what we're giving away this week? Uh freaking huge, sweet game. That's not a game. I asked oh. you to guess. Bioshock oh. Infinite. Oh. Yeah, it is a freaking huge, sweet game. Yeah, that's all right. I guess. So if you want to win Bioshock Infinite, we'll uh, post a message on Twitter and reply, follow, retweet do that kind of stuff and uh you'll be entered and we'll uh have a drawing yeah. next week a random yeah, dot org cool. drawing <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so all right everybody it is time for random stuff this is where we just talk we about got? random crap i mean we usually do that mm-hmm. through the whole episode anyways but <laughs> we made a We're segment a more focused on it <laughs> <laughs> we like to hone in on the random crap we talk about now yeah yeah what do you got? So, you know what? I just, I actually changed my random crap. Uh, you did. Midstream. Because you said mm-hmm. something and it made me think of it. And this is something I just always, you know, want to talk about. Reese's Pieces. <laughs> uh-huh. You know what bugs me, Aaron? Is What's when that? people say Reese's Pieces. Ah. Uh. What about Reese's Pieces? I've heard that too. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> yeah. I hate that. It's gross. And it's yeah. not because people think they're being cute saying it. It's because people are dumb. They think it's correct. Reese's Pieces. They don't see the apostrophe S. Uh, and it's like, hey, his name, his name isn't Mr. Reese. <laughs> his it, name it's Reese. is Mr. Reese. And he yeah. has some pieces. Therefore, yeah. they are Reese's pieces. Pieces. Why would you call They're it delicious, Reese's pieces? 
That doesn't even rhyme. <laughs> I gotta get me some Reese's. <laughs> do you? Now, do you feel uh, particularly offended because it's one of your favorite candies? It's not. No, I think it's, it's delicious, though. No, I'm offended yeah. because uh, I just object to stupid people. Just the idiocy. Yeah. Of- other I don't humans. mind if someone's cute and they're like, ha, ha, <laughs> they're a little kid and they're like Reese's Pieces, right? Because <laughs> right. it rhymes with feces. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but this is not the case. <laughs> no, this is not. So no, don't ever say it to me again. And and uh, it is something I won't even let go. Wait, of. me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is something. I mean, the general populace <laughs> right <laughs> uh it, it is something i won't let go either like if someone says it in my presence it's not like yeah. you know choose your battles that is a battle i choose right. every time <laughs> i'm going to take Damn, you we'll down take that <laughs> and i i will start with what did you just say yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> like i'm really offended <laughs> and, and proceed to make you cry and then i will just break it down the way i just did what is his yeah. name <laughs> yeah <laughs> What does, what does the apostrophe <laughs> S mean? It is possessive. <laughs> You're an idiot. And then I just grab their candy and throw all of them at it. Scatter. I had no idea that you were this uh, passionate. particular yeah. about. Yeah, sorry. Passionate about <laughs> candy names. <Yeah. laughs> so what's your random thing? Uh, mine is, do you work in silence? Like, not when you're doing something where you have to interact with somebody, but when you're doing computer creative work. Hello, do you darkness, work in silence? my old friend. Yeah. I've come to talk <laughs> with you again. <laughs> that would be an option. So, you, you are asking me? Or are you waiting I for asking, our listeners? I to- am asking you and the listeners if you want to respond. Um, it depends. I sometimes I do this a lot. I put headphones in my ears and I don't yeah. hit play on anything. I just have the headphones yeah. in my ears. Yeah. Uh, I, it depends on the type of work that I'm doing. If I am doing work in Photoshop yeah. where I'm touching up images or something like that, I will mm-hmm. have um, music with lyrics. I can play yeah. that and not be distracted. Right. And I can listen to the music and still concentrate on the work. Right. If I am writing, which I do that at work as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can only have music that does not have lyrics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just, it distracts me and I either completely tune out the um, music or mm-hmm. I have trouble focusing on the writing. Okay. How about you? Uh, it very much depends on what I'm working on. I, it's, it's sort of like when I'm driving in the car and I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly what I'm doing. I can drive and blast music and it's great. But if suddenly like, I'm like, oh man, where am I? Like suddenly I feel lost that extra like input is too much. Like I have to, it sounds stupid, but I've talked to several other people who do the same thing. Like suddenly if you're in the car and you need to figure out where you're going, even if you don't have to talk to somebody else, there's no reason to turn the volume down. I will shut off the radio yeah. because it's too much like extra things for my brain to process at that moment. You know, really we, we try to say that we are, uh, that we multitask, but we yeah. actually aren't very good at multitasking. <laughs> yeah, like just in general. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and I, it's the, the exact same thing with computer stuff. Like if I'm doing something that I've done a million times, if I'm doing like I do that a lot when I'm doing like 3D modeling. Like if I'm really comfortable with the particular project, I'll just jam and like do what I got to do, and that's it. Like I don't have to think. It just my hands do things mm-hmm. and stuff happens, and. But if there's something that I really have to think through to like make some sort of like calculation, if it's an animation, like whoops, timing stuff, or just have to think about something. And like you said, with writing specifically, um, then no, like I'll shut everything off. And I will also like, especially when I was working with other people, I would leave headphones on partly because 
it would keep people away from me. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just work in peace. Leave me alone. Uh, yeah. And then it also does kind of help me tune them out. It kind of dampens the noise around me as well. Yeah. So there's kind of exactly. two advantages to it. You're in, in your bubble. All right, everybody. It's time for the question of the week. I like this mm-hmm. question. Yeah, I've got too. some history with this question. Have you ever considered quitting gaming as a hobby? No. No, no, really. <laughs> I did not expect that um, answer. I, uh, I, yeah, I don't think that I've ever thought that somebody, or, do you mean like as like a self-imposed ultimatum? Um, okay. For instance, or either way. a new console is going to come out and you're just like, I'm just kind of done. I'm not going to buy a new console or anything. I'm just Mm -hmm. not going to keep up with it anymore. I kind of like considered that a little bit with the Xbox one Mm -hmm. and the PS4, because like as steam and PC games started to sort of like have a a bit of a comeback, I didn't feel like it was as necessary for me to have a console, but I do mean gaming in general, in in general and but just at that point where it's like, even if it would be upgrading your computer or something like that. Sure. Sure. So, um, I'm often curious, like if that is something that will like happen at some point yeah. where I'll feel like, I don't want to do games anymore. I came to a crossroads at one point in my yeah. life mm-hmm. and it was just before the 360 launched. Mm-hmm. And I, it, at, at that time, I don't think I was doing as much creatively, and I was just about to get into a creative boom. And mm-hmm. I, um, I, I was working in IT, and I, I was just, I don't think I was happy with it. And I started like looking at gaming as the reason I wasn't doing anything with my life. Like, I'm just, look at me, I just, I go to work and I play games and I'm not creating anything. You I know, see. and so yeah. it came to a point where I was just like, I have to to do away with that stuff because I I need to start being creative and, uh, you know, making something. Right. And so it, it was almost a, an extreme reaction. And then the 360 came out and I was like, I got to have that. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. <laughs> and I finally I, I found a balance. And that's kind of my uh-huh. my mantra in life is that life is about balance. And right. um, so I was able to start creating. I ended up leaving the IT area, you know, IT department and going into a creative mm-hmm. position and yeah. found that outlet and started illustrating a lot more again and working with video mm-hmm. and so and music. And yeah. uh, so it, it kind of just I was like, you know what, I can do this stuff. And, um, still, you know, be creative and, and, uh, actually create a body of work, you know? And, right. And so there's, yeah, I was just able to find balance. And then I was like, I'm never going to quit gaming. Now yeah. <laughs> I'm at that point. <laughs> I, I really yeah. doubt that I will. I mean, I, yeah. um, my, my grandparents, my grandma is, I think she's 88 or something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, no, she still games. You know, she plays, oh, really? she plays the words with friends. Sure. So, sure. you know, that kind of thing on her, on her iPhone, you know, so, yeah. uh, and on her computer. And so, yeah, I just don't think it's, it's just a part of our generation and it's going to stick with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think my, my dad is sort of the same way. He plays some games on his iPhone and, um, I, I think now it's not the same experience that I had when I like growing up, like whenever I had free time, I would just game. Yeah. Like that was my, my go-to thing. But now like as we get older, there are so many other things we've got going on. Like whether it's other creative outlets that we're involved in, whether it's work, whether it's like significant others, you know, whatever is going on. Like now it's more like I have to figure out the time that I can do it. Yeah. Like budgeting my time. Like this will be my gaming time. This will be my whatever time. And I, th- I think for uh, creating this, the the podcast, unbelievable power hour, all that stuff. 
Uh, yeah. That was a way to marry the two, you know, like because yeah, I have that sure. passion for gaming and then sure. passion for being creative. And so mm-hmm. it was just like, man, let's just put those two together and yeah, then we can for sure. do the one to support the other, you know, so yeah. 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 gotta go to work <laughs> yeah stupid work <laughs> so that brings us to the end of episode 10 yeah do you have Double anything digits. you want to say before we go uh uh congratulations <laughs> no we made it through 10 episodes <laughs> <laughs> so everybody yeah, uh, it's time for closers and plugs yeah you want to get a hold of us i do want to let us know if you have ever considered quitting gaming as a hobby or want to respond to anything else we've talked about on the show, email us at podcast at uphshow.com. Our Twitter show, our Twitter show, our Twitter handle <laughs> is at uphshow. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash uphshow. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes and Stitcher.com. And we also have a Steam group, Unbelievable Power Hour. You know, you you brought up an observation uh, earlier about what I do when I drink water. And What's I'll a- bring up an observation every week that we do closers. After uh-huh. I say the the plug, you agree with a mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> I, 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 as you're saying that. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. and then <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel. We put a lot of gaming content out there, and we also put our show. You can check this out. Look at our faces, and uh, please don't forget to like our vids. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thanks, guys. <laughs>